Hello friends. So in this last lecture of respiratory system, uh, we are going to see about the carbon dioxide transport, the regulation of entire respiration process and at last we are going to see various disorders which are related to the respiratory system. So let us first consider carbon dioxide transport. Now, during the process of understanding oxygen transport, we also have gone through the steps of carbon dioxide transport. For an example, there are three ways of the carbon dioxide transport as we know. The first mode of the carbon dioxide transport is, is carbonic acid that is dissolved into the water but we all know that only 7% of the carbon dioxide is carried out by water into the dissolved state as it can increase the acidity that is decrease the pH of the blood plasma so it is not actually advisable to have higher concentration of carbonic acid into the blood so the other mode of the transportation of the carbon dioxide is carbamino hemoglobin about 20 to 25 percent of the carbon dioxide is transported by hemoglobin as carbohemoglobin or few are by the other proteins which are present into the blood plasma. So if they are conjoined with the protein molecule and getting transported that is carbohemoglobin and approximately 20 to 25 percent is transported like that. So when PCO2 is high and PO2 is low in the tissue, more binding of carbon dioxide occurs with the protein as a, a carbamino hemoglobin. But when the carbon dioxide pressure is low and oxygen pressure is high into the alveoli, that association will be ruptured. So dissociation of carbon dioxide will happen. So carbamino hemoglobin will be dissociated into the lungs. So these are two main modes of transport of carbon dioxide. Now please take the screenshot of the slide. Third mode of the transport of carbon dioxide is by or as bicarbonate ions and as we all know that 70 percent of carbon dioxide is getting transported as bicarbonate ions rbc and plasma both containing the enzyme that is carbonic anhydrase which is facilitating the entire mechanism of generation of bicarbonates right so when carbon dioxide is dissolved into the water it will be immediately turned into carbonic acid and that carbonic acid will be broken down into the carbonate and proton ions this reaction will be facilitated by carbonic anhydride which is present into the blood on the surface of RBC as well and into the plasma as well. So that's what one of the most important way by which the carbon dioxide is getting transported. If you see the reaction which is given below into the diagram, carbon dioxide at a tissue goes or travels into the blood plasma and it 
actually binds with the water to form H2CO3 which will be broken down further into the carbonate and proton. Ready? And that carbon will be flown within the plasma of blood. That capillary will be moving out of the tissue, going towards lungs. And in lungs, what happens is that these CO2, HCO3, sorry, will be again joining with the proton. Again form the carbonic acid and that will again deform into the form of carbon dioxide and water and carbon dioxide in turn will pass on into the alveoli. Now during that when carbon HCO3 is moving out at tissue chlorine will be getting in and when carbon dioxide is moving out into the alveoli the chlorine is getting out so this shows chlorine shift or chloride shift what we have seen into the last lecture ready so that's what the entire mechanism of the transport of carbon dioxide as bicarbonate so i advise you to take the screenshot so that we can move ahead <coughs> Now, if you see the transport of the carbon dioxide as carbonate ion plus few as carbamino hemoglobin and very little as diesel stat. Now, if we calculate in total only 100 ml of deoxygenated blood actually delivers 4 ml of carbon dioxide the figure which is connected with oxygenated blood and delivery of oxygen is 5 ml but when it is deoxygenated blood and figure of delivering carbon dioxide then it comes to 4 ml of carbon dioxide plus sorry per 100 ml of deoxygenated blood so that's the story of the carbon dioxide transport which is happening in our body. Please take the screenshot. Now <clears throat> let us consider and discuss regulation of respiration. Now entire process of respiration is not rhythmic and into the steady state. Why? Because state of body is never constant. Sometimes we take rest, sometimes we are active and sometimes we are very active. All the conditions are having different set of requirement of energy and nutrients. In rest state, we require minimum nutrition and minimum energy. During active state, we have small quantity, we require small quantity of the energy and at active state, we require the energy and nutrients at the at the very large quantity so in that case we requires transportation of number one nutrition and number two oxygen both at the highest level so in all the necessary condition the level of rate of respiration always changing during rest we decrease the rate of respiration during active state we behave normal with our respiratory rate and in very active state we increase the rate of respiration and that is in turn regulated by few mechanisms and all under your uh, sorry uh, your nervous system right 
so let us discuss all of them so first which is important into regulation of the respiration is rhythmic centers which is responsible for inspiration and expiration so this this are having two centers one center is managing the inspiration activity and one center is managing the activity of the expiration so inspiratory and expiratory centers number 2 pneumotaxic center and number 3 chemo sensitive areas so these are the three major portion which are responsible for maintaining various state and demand of respiratory gases within the blood within the tissues and hence they are actually managing the respiratory rate so let us discuss individually all of them right so please take the screenshot of the slide okay uh let me first describe about the respiratory rhythmic centers right so if i talk about rhythmic area or rhythmic centers is you can see into the diagram that they are situated into the medulla oblongata right it is into the medulla oblongata one is expiratory area and one is inspiratory area both are there upper one is inspiratory and lower one is the expiratory so inspiratory and expiratory both areas are located into the medulla oblongata now what they are doing they regulates normal functioning of number 1 inspiration that is by inspiratory area and number 2 expiration that is by expiratory area so normal rate of breathing that is inspiration and expiration is controlled by this two area right they are located into the medulla oblongata and the location is given here into the diagram if you can see ready so that's what the actual location of this two area fine take a screenshot and we are moving ahead okay now let us talk about pneumotaxic center now it is located into pons right pons is the upper portion towards medulla oblongata right so this is the pons which are into the diagram and the area which contains pneumotaxic area is situated just above the inspiratory area now what is the function of them it mod moderately functions respiratory rhythms right it actually moderates the function of the respiratory rhythmic center so these centers are controlled under influence of pneumotaxic area neural signal from this center reduces the duration of inspiration and thereby they alter the respiratory rate rate sorry so to lower down the rate of respiration pneumotaxic center is most important so when you are working at the higher extent for example you are playing a games you are doing exercise or you are into the tremendous pressure hypertension in that case your requirement of breathing that is a requirement of energy increases that's why breathing rate increases so to get back into the normal state pneumotaxic center is responsible right so it moderates the respiratory rhythm and lower downs the speed to normal one 
right? So that is this function of the pneumotaxic center. Please take the screenshot and we are moving towards the third area and that is chemosensitive area. Now when I am talking about chemosensitive area, there definitely I must concentrate on the word chemo that is chemicals. Here those chemicals are carbon dioxide and proton, right? So we are actually judging the concentration of carbon dioxide. We are or various centers in our body. They are sensitive, right? Towards the concentration of carbon dioxide and concentration of proton. Right? So this sensitive area send the signal to the central nervous system to adjust or to alter the rate either for increment or for doing it normal. So adjustment of rhythmic center, so adjacent to the rhythmic center, the, its location, right? it is increasing the concentration right into the concentration of carbon dioxide and proton due to when it is increased it activates the centers which in turn signals the rhythmic center to either increase or decrease the rate of respiration ready now for for that particular function we have special receptors which are located into the aortic arc and number two carotid artery mind it very well these are the special receptors we are which is located which are located onto the aortic arc which is moving out of the heart and carotid arteries so it senses the carbon dioxide concentration that is pco2 and also the concentration of proton now it recognizes the change into the carbon dioxide or proton concentration and send the necessary signal to the rhythmic center to either increase or decrease the rate of respiration and that's what the role of this chemosensitive area which are located into the various arteries specifically aortic arc and carotid artery right so that's the function of sensitive uh, chemosensitive areas so by increasing or decreasing the rate of respiration we can we can compensate the need of various parts of the body in order to uh, receive the oxygen or in order to uh, release the carbon dioxide now role of oxygen right role of oxygen in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite insignificant it is having very less role into that so it is depending entirely on carbon dioxide concentration not on oxygen concentration that's what you are supposed to remember fine so please take the screenshot and we are moving ahead into the next topic uh, the last topic which is concerned with this uh, chapter is the disorders which are generally found with respiratory system <coughs> allergy is one of the very commonly found phenomena with various organs hence with respiratory system as well so number one disorder of respiratory system is hypersensitivity that is asthma it is actually exaggerated by difficulty in breathing which causing wheezing due to the inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles right and this inflammation mechanism is shown the diagram shown into the diagram which is below this is normal uh, uh, the airway that is passage air passage 
Now, if you see into the early attack of the asthma, these folds are increased, right? And that folds increasing more wisely to block entire airway so that air is not getting passed through this airway, this pipe and air is not actually trapped into the alveoli. So this is what happens during asthma. It is the attack where this alveoli is getting blocked. This passage is getting blocked. Right now there are so many medicines but uh, available for the, uh, the asthma but the majority of the area, the more commonly or wisely used uh, medicine is these pumps. Right? So you have to or uh, the, uh, the, uh, the person who is having earth asthma when they found the asthma attack at that time they need to pump the medicine which is actually uh, working against the allergens and decreases the effect of the asthma. Ready? So that's the story of asthma. Please take the screenshot. Number two, emphysema. So the disease which is found in the alveoli, right? It is the disease which is found into alveoli and in that alveoli walls are damaged due to which respiratory surface decreases. The major cause for that is smoking the cigarettes or BDs. Right? The middle one is, if you see the diagram, middle one is the healthy uh, alveoli. Now, in the condition of pneumonia, the fluid and blood cells it is filled into the alveoli but during the emphysema the alveoli membrane is getting bro broken down right so surface which is actually uh, able to exchange the gas is reduced during the emphysema so it is breakdown damage which is caused by the various types of fumes flames which are getting into the alveoli and it actually ruptures huge load of the alveoli within the lungs so the person who is smoking so uh, rapid which is a chain smoker we can say so their lungs are actually affected very highly and uh, the uh, the photograph is showing how much effect of the cigarette smoking or uh, how much uh, effect as an as an emphysema patient you can see into the lungs right so that's the story of emphysema so definitely avoiding cigarette or smoking is the only way of getting rid of this type of disorders so please take the screenshot fine and this is the last or third disorder named occupational respiratory disorders now there are so many laborers who are working under the condition where they have so many uh, dust particle into the air at their workplaces for example construction workers for example work, uh, workers who are working in the mines of coals or uh, various uh, uh, we can say limestone etc 
so there they find uh, uh, the deposition of this kind of small dust particles into the lungs and that causes two kinds of major disorder named number one silicosis right number one is silicosis deposition of silica into the respiratory tract till alveoli right so breathing of silica depositing the silica particles into the respiratory organs it is called silicosis majority of the time workers which are working under construction sites or cement factories they are found to have this kind of disorders ready now if i talk about the second disorder it is asbestosis now due to the breathing of asbestos particles into the respiration so these particles are getting accumulated into the lungs and that's, uh, that is why this disorder is known as asbestosis. Uh, the workers which are into the mining industries, they are found to have this kind of asbestosis. Right? So, they actually ruptures the entire structure and function of the lungs. So, respiratory area decreases and lack of respiratory uh, gaseous exchange that is lack of oxygen is found and it creates huge problems in breathing mechanism right so those are the main disorders which are found and by this point we are ending with this chapter right so i wish you all the best uh, have a nice time bye